there are a lot of perks in Fallout 3. The majority of them just provide small bonuses to various skills. Plus 5 to repair and medicine, plus 15 to barter, plus 10 to speech, that sort of thing. But there's one perk that actually gives you a new way to attack enemies. Can you beat Fallout 3 as a nuclear anomaly? Uh, probably not. Nuclear Anomaly is a perk you can't get until you reach level 30, which also happens to be the max level in Fallout 3, even with all DLCs installed. In this challenge, the only way to attack an enemy is with that perk. So could you somehow reach level 30 in Fallout 3 without attacking anything? I highly doubt it, since there are no XP farm exploits, if you want to call them that, like there are in Fallout 4, at least not that I'm aware of. Which means there are two ways for me to get this perk, and both involve cheating. But we'll get to that in a bit. Inside Vault 101, I named myself Adam Bomb and started assigning special points. I drained Strength, Charisma, and Intelligence because they had no value to me, maxed out Perception and Endurance to be able to take a couple important perks, and put the rest in Agility and Luck. Looking back, Luck was probably a waste. I think I would have been better off putting those points into Strength. The bonus to all skills is negligible, and I have a hard time believing that critical damage applies to the walking Nagasaki perk. I did kill the roach during my 10th birthday party, only so that I wouldn't have to play the game as a baby or as a child, escaped the vault without attacking anything as I've done many times, and stepped outside, ready to leave the world of mortals behind and take my place among the stars. I used the reward XP command to give myself enough experience points to get me to level 30, and began the process of assigning skill points and picking skills. In an effort to not become too overpowered, because I'd be at level 30 and would have a bunch of perks by the time this was over, I spread out my skill points evenly amongst all skills as I leveled up. I think this is a fair way to balance things out. Almost half the skills, big guns, energy weapons, explosives, melee weapons, small guns, and unarmed, are worthless since I can't use any of those weapons. Doing it this way kept me from maxing out only the skills I'd be using, like medicine or repair. I'm not gonna go through all the perks I picked, there isn't time to talk about 30 different perks. The big ones were Explorer, which marked all locations on my map, Rad Tolerance to slap minor radiation poisoning back to where it belonged, Rad Absorption to turn my sweat into a cool neon green color, Devil's Highway to set my karma to very evil, Toughness, which was a dumb move on my part. No weaknesses, to raise all special stats lower than 5, up to 5, that's a good one. And Nuclear Anomaly. With this perk, anytime your health is below 20%, you erupt into a devastating nuclear explosion, causing big damage to everyone and everything near you, including your armor and your limbs. With just about every skill at 70, and the power to channel a nuclear detonation inside me, I set off into the capital wasteland, looking for people to annihilate. My first stop was Silver out in an abandoned house. Because I couldn't directly attack her to trick her into activating my trap card, I had to steal worthless objects from her. It was funny to watch her put bullet after bullet into my sternum. She thought she could kill me. After spending more time than you'd think being filled with lead and taunting her with coffee cups, my health got below 20% and nothing happened. You wanna know why I f***ed up? I read when your health is below 20 as when your health is below 20%. This is probably why I had to take those special reading classes in kindergarten. So, with 620 hit points, I've gotta get down to a single sliver of health before I detonate. And the wacky part is that my eruption can actually kill me, which seemed counterintuitive and weird. Turning my legs into the remnants of a roadkill squirrel dropped into a high-powered blender was expected, but death was not. Unfazed by my own demise, I entered Megaton, and was a righteous prick to Moira. My rudeness towards her pissed her off, which then pissed me off even more than she was, prompting me to come to the realization that everyone in town had to go. I stole the eraser off a pencil, and everyone lost their mind. Bullets were flying, my blood was all over the place, explosions happened many times, it was wonderful. I didn't even have to fight back. In their attempts to kill me, they made me more powerful than they could ever imagine. Now, there are a couple unique quirks and features that affect this perk, because it is, after all, a Bethesda game. The good thing is that it restores health when you do the big boom. That's useful because you can only detonate once every 10 seconds. With enough health, that gives you enough time to run out the clock and get ready to cosplay as a mushroom cloud. 
and the explosion itself is pretty large. I've seen people say it's a worthless perk, but that's simply not true. If nothing else, having it as a failsafe that is automatically activated when your health is low enough makes it worth having. The downside is that it sometimes doesn't work. The explosion happens, but the people around you are not damaged by it in any way. My guess is that it's because this perk is kind of like Euclid's Sea Finder from New Vegas. It's not meant to be used as frequently as I was using it. Later in the playthrough, I figured out that quick saving and quick loading before you destroy everything can sometimes fix it, but other times it doesn't. The last thing, as I mentioned not long ago, is that depending on the difficulty, the blast can kill you. So you've got to be careful about what difficulty you choose to play on. With most of the people in the town dead, or wishing they were, I spoke to Burke, rigged the bomb to see my big brother in action later in life tried to rob Crow outside of Megaton to devastate the outside as I did the inside, but nobody was brave enough to face a walking nuclear warhead in open combat. The metal lad seemed ready for it, but he was too weak. I didn't want to take advantage of something that wasn't even alive in the first place. A Yao Guai though, oh yeah, I'm all about it. The big beaver faced his end in style, even doing a somersault into the afterlife. I played with a little doggy too, it used the flesh on my forearm as a chew toy. I gave it a bop on the snout with a nuclear newspaper to let it know that kind of thing isn't allowed in the Mitten Squad household, and went shopping for more dead bodies. They weren't in stock, but I know a guy who knows a guy who could help me out. Both of those guys are me. What surprised me was that I actually managed to die a few times while dealing with the raiders, most likely because 20 health isn't really all that much. If someone has a powerful gun like a combat shotgun, it's fairly likely that they'll take you from 23 to 0 before you can say Hiroshima. Having clipped the right coupons to get a 3 for 1 special, I spent, I don't know, 5 minutes putting all the shopping carts back where they belong. Then I thought a grenade would send the- <laughs> Vibrating phone <laughs> threw me off, <laughs> piece of sh what was I even saying? Then, I thought a grenade would send them all flying, but that didn't happen. Let down, and unable to parkour on a flaming car, I continued southeast towards you know who. She may be powerful, but even she cannot overcome the power of the atom. I reached my hand up in there and grabbed some goodies. She caught me of course, how could she not? I've got fingernails like razor blades, and I unfortunately failed at making her mad enough to attack me. It's like she knew what I was doing. I even tried throwing one of her buckets inside her shack to really turn her tumbleweed into a tornado, but that didn't work. Then, needing her to be dead already, I allowed myself to hit her one time with my hands. That f***ing c*** ran into the sea. She is as smart as she is stupid. She knew the ocean was the one place I couldn't get her. Maybe, I kinda forgot that drowning hurts, and stood on the pier instead of breathing in the water to drain my health enough to explode while submerged in water. The curse of Grandma Sparkle for the first time in recorded history, did not plague me, but only because I couldn't kill her. To make up for that, I broke both my legs by accidentally jumping off a bridge on purpose and getting into a scuffle with a group of raiders camped out under that bridge. One of the trolls thought he got me because he had the high ground. I'd make another Star Wars reference, but the only one I've seen all the way through is Solo. After discovering the Citadel, I crossed the river to the Jefferson Memorial where centaurs and super mutants littered the landscape and were eager to meet their maker. The first blast got him good. The horse dog tentacle monster man and his owner died, but the others were not amused by my little magic trick. They didn't take damage. However, because my health was partially restored after each explosion, I could just stand there and take the punishment until it happened again. Didn't work the second time either, so I entered the memorial to cause great damage to the structure of the building as well as those inside. The perk is so powerful that even a super mutant master can be brought to justice with just a singular use of it. One of the more annoying parts of using this perk is how long it can take the bad guys to suck your hit points away with their fancy guns and big sticks. You want to find the right middle ground in terms of difficulty where the nuke doesn't kill you but the attacks from the attackers aren't so powerful that they'll kill you before the explosion can happen either. I found that to be easy or normal depending on the instance. As I was being stricken down by the bullies in the basement, something caught my eye. The super mutant, he looked different from the others, and I couldn't figure out why. I learned later that it's because they're the overlord variety of mutant, and are the toughest super mutants excluding the behemoth. He was tricky to take down, due to his toughness, and because of the damage thing I mentioned earlier. It took three nuclear anomaly explosions to bring him down. Compared to him, none of the others inside were much of a threat. The Jefferson building was cleared out, as were the mutants on the outside, and I set my sights on Smith Casey's garage. 
A couple more explosions happened on the way out there. A bee wasn't very interested in my idea of being tag teamed by itself and a dog, so it killed the dog before I could. I killed it, blew up a mole rat with my body, and watched as a pair of albino rat scorpions made a sentry bot their bitch. If you want a real fight, these are the guys you need to seek out. The Fallout Wiki says they have the third most hit points of any NPC in the game, only being surpassed by Behemoths and that general from the Operation Anchorage DLC. What's more, they also possess traits similar to that of the solar-powered perk, meaning they slowly regenerate health while in the sun. On the easy difficulty, a single sting was enough to kill me with somewhere around 160 hit points left. They're no joke, but I am. I'm the big joke and my body is the punchline. Well, my nuclear discharge is the punchline. But even then, getting myself into a position where it could go off was no easy feat. I had to use armor and stim packs to lessen the damage from their attacks. It was more difficult than you'd think, and it still took multiple blasts to kill them, assuming they actually hurt the scorpions, because sometimes they didn't. With their insidey parts inside me, I continued my journey towards the garage. At least I did, until I got distracted by an idea. That idea being stung multiple times by the deadliest albino anything to ever exist on God's gray and brown and green earth. A couple hooligans lured me into the sewer with the promise of candy, then proceeded to beat me to death with their tire irons until my molecules could stand it no longer and unleashed their ultimate finishing move, which did nothing because the sewer is imaginary. I'm not actually here right now. See, I'm outside. I also went ahead and activated the free cam to get a wide shot of what it looks like when I erupt. It was kind of a letdown. Wasn't very interesting. What was interesting was stealing from a group of Brotherhood outcasts to annoy them. That was the big one, big enough to cripple all my limbs that mattered. There wasn't anything valuable in the one left unharmed. At Tenpenny Tower, I told Gustavo that I'd handle the ghoul problem for him and set off for the metro station. The feral ghouls and glowing ones were similar to the albino scorpions from two paragraphs ago. They ripped and tore away at my health until it was gone. Inside the station, I got mauled to the point of exhaustion by a third of a dozen ghouls. They were p****s who took too long to drain my health enough for a violent outburst. Roy Phillips said me a profanity even after I told him how much I hate it when people f***ing swear at me. He died, Michael McMaster took longer than I would have liked to deplete my hit points, and didn't even have the common courtesy to die after being on the receiving end of a human-shaped nuclear blast. After a couple reloads, he did, but the ghoulish eye candy would not fall before me. Even after allowing myself to hit a feral woman, she slashed at me with a knife a couple times then ran away. Unable to kill that which has been stuck between life and death for generations, I left the tunnels, reported my failure back to Gustavo, met Mrs. Burke at the top of the tower, witnessed a weird looking explosion. The mushroom cloud was there, but it was missing the fire part of the fireball. Odd. Mrs. Tenpenny was as stunning as ever. I dropped a gift down to the peasants below, exploded another mutated bear, arrived at the garage, and entered Tranquility Lane. Before getting on with the summoning of make-believe communists, I hit my dad a couple times to anger him into biting me. The nuclear anomaly perk does in fact work on Tranquility Lane. However, Bradley was unscathed. Some guys in fancy hats showed up and started shooting people. I postponed the challenge for a moment because this isn't real, it's imaginary too, so that I could get the communists to shoot a weird looking little boy until a nuclear armageddon gushed open from his chest cavity. But they weren't having that. So I left the simulation, spoke to Mother, and left her in the dust. Literally. I trapped her down in the vault area with the mole rats. Outside, I excitedly ran towards a group of five Talon Company mercenaries. The f***ing sentry bot robbed me of my fun, like the people in the Mitten Squad Discord server when we changed all the roll colors to purple for like 15 minutes. But Father Fate saw my struggle and sent a death claw to rip the pain away. We ran towards each other, ready to embrace. Then he ignored me in favor of the albino claw f The death claw never stood a chance. I exploded. The ordinary scorpion melted into the pavement. I entered Little Lamplight and made my way to Murder Pass. I did this because I really didn't feel like going to Rivet City or ever seeing my mother who calls himself Dad ever again. The base mutants in the Hell Cave weren't much to write a letter home about, but the overlords sure as were. They had these tri-beam lasers that would f you up in a matter of seconds without being able to detonate yourself before you die. Again, it required a combination of actual armor, stim packs, and medics to be able to activate the perk on their ass. The overlords were still not a pushover though. Deeper inside, I kept dying to the overlord, probably because I quicksaved 
right around the time the laser entered my nostril. The 10 second period between blasts also bit me in the fanny here. It took a lot more effort than I would have liked to get to the test chambers. Thankfully, Sid and the Centaur twins were able to be made dead easily enough. The explosion kept not damaging mutants, so I started ignoring them, grabbed the Gek while taking a surprisingly low amount of radiation damage, tried to kamikaze f these mutants with my flimsy body, but my life left my body around the time I died, so it didn't really work out. Fox ignored me as I got abducted by the Enclave. What a true friend that guy is. I got my stuff back and began making my way through the Enclave base. I went out of my way to make sure the scientists were eradicated when I exploded. Met the president, got the vial, returned to the Citadel, and remembered that I hadn't actually entered the Citadel yet, so I had to exploit my way inside. I've done this as a baby, I've done it without moving the camera. Being a sentient warhead with full control of all my limbs made this a cakewalk. This was probably the easiest time I've ever had getting under the Citadel. From there, all that was left to do was meet Elder Lions for the first time, get my armor, and follow Liberty Prime to the Jefferson Memorial. The unfortunate thing is that pushing through waves of fortified Enclave encampments is where this perk would shine, but that's not what you're doing. If you had ranged weapons, you could help out. But when you have to be within 7 feet of someone and on the verge of death just to have a chance of doing damage to an enemy, you're effectively worthless. Just before the bridge, I had the chance to destroy this Enclave soldier with a stupid face, but the Brotherhood reinforcements arrived and stole his death from me. I was 8 hit points away from going off on him. Then they killed him. But the exploding car certainly killed me. Inside the memorial, I died several times, detonated several more, and entered the rotunda. Predictably, the perk failed to work here. I'd love to say that the perk is like my air conditioner. It just works. But both of those statements would be lies. In time, Colonel Autumn was turned into a puddle of corpse on the ground. Someone I never met told Sarah Lyons that we had to activate the purifier now if we wanted to live. She wondered which of us was going inside to do the deed, and I told her no. Neither of us are going inside, and I'm not telling her the code. What she didn't understand is that this is not the face of a man who wants to continue living. This man has seen what the universe looks like inside out, and is ready to die. The purifier exploded, taking both myself and Sarah with it. And I'm like, 90% sure I didn't beat Fallout 3 as a nuclear anomaly. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters, as well as other channel members, for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.